Welcome back, everyone. You are enjoying another episode of Fast Facts Pharmacology Edition, brought to you by Tale of Two Hygienist in partnership with Elevate Oral Care. And now, please welcome your host, Tom Viola. Hi, I'm Tom Viola, a certified pharmacist, dental educator, and author. Stick with me, and I promise to make the next few minutes the best pharmacology learning experience you've ever had. Hi, everybody. Tom Viola from Pharmacology Declassified. We got another Fast Facts Pharmacology edition. We're still talking about pain. Yes, we are, because there's so much to talk about, right? Well, we're going to finish up our discussion about NSAIDs and now talk about who can't take them. Well, wait a minute. NSAIDs are like the benchmark. They're like the prototype. They're like the thing we use to treat dental pain. If we can't use NSAIDs, what are we going to use? Well, that's the point, right? What would you use if you can't use an NSAID? You might use a steroid, uh, but that's usually like post-extraction or after you know very extensive or traumatic procedures, something like dexamethasone. Uh, you might use uh, bupivacaine, uh, a long-acting anesthetic agent to keep the patient out of pain for a significantly long period of time. Um, but everything beyond that, uh, acetaminophen, cannabis, opioids, all not anti-inflammatory, so they don't really do very well in managing acute inflammatory pain like dental pain. But there are times when you just can't use NSAIDs. When is that, Viola? Well, for example, patients with asthma. As we said earlier, patients with asthma may not do very well when they're taking ibuprofen or any other NSAID because, again, those drugs interfere with the production of the beneficial prostaglandins that cause smooth muscle relaxation, especially in the bronchioles, right? What else? Patients with cardiovascular disease who already have fluid retention. Probably not a good idea to give someone who already has fluid retention a drug that makes them retain fluid. <laughs> okay, makes sense. But what about patients with peptic ulcer and ulcerative colitis? We talked about this in a previous uh, earlier edition. We said that patients who have ulcers or who have a disease like ulcerative colitis uh, probably can't take NSAIDs like ibuprofen because it wears down the protective mucosal layer in the GI, and that just sets up the... Uh, the, the attack, if you will, or the degradation of the, the lining of the GI, and that can have disastrous results, okay? And we also talked about renal function. We said that, you know, ibuprofen can interfere with the function of the kidneys by interfering with the production of those good prostaglandins that keeps blood flowing to the kidneys. So if a patient has, you know, renal function impairment, ibuprofen may not be the best choice for them in managing their dental pain. Uh, what about pregnancy? We talked about that as well. We said patients who are pregnant can sometimes use ibuprofen, but many times obstetricians steer clear of using ibuprofen, even though we know patients who are pregnant can sometimes express oxytocin when they're in significant pain. We worry about the fact that ibuprofen can interfere with fetal circulation, causing premature closures. Uh, can, it can actually increase the risk of a premature birth. So in all those cases, we'd prefer not to use ibuprofen if possible. And of course, there's always a history of hypersensitivity to aspirin, as we well know. Uh, so patients who are uh, allergic to aspirin probably shouldn't use ibuprofen because they could be allergic to ibuprofen as well. So those are some examples of patients who can't use ibuprofen. Uh, for now, my friends, we're going to say that the benefit typically outweighs the risk, but always check with the doctor to make sure we get uh, the best information we can for each individual patient. Until next time, my friends, this is Tom Viola saying, be well. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to hear more from me, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or visit my website at www.tomviola.com. Thank you for listening to another episode of Fast Facts Pharmacology Edition, brought to you in part by Elevate Oral Care, creators of the innovative and proven prevention-focused oral care products from Advantage Arrest Silver Diamine Fluoride to Floramax Sodium Fluoride Varnish. Learn more by visiting www.elevateoralcare.com and schedule your free CE staff meeting today. We'll see you next time for another Fast Facts.